This is At the Public Library, the video source for news and information about the San Francisco Public Library system. This month's show features a listing of some great literary programs taking place in March, an invitation to enjoy Irish stories with Al Ghetto, and a look at the upcoming Bay Area Environmental Film Festival taking place this month at the Main Library. All this and much more coming up on At the Public Library. The San Francisco Public Library is presenting a major exhibition of original paintings by children's book illustrator Jerry Pinckney, an award-winning artist committed to themes addressing cultural diversity and to building bridges between people of different cultures. Building Bridges, the Art of Jerry Pinckney is on display in the Jewett Gallery on the lower level of the main library through March 21st. Originating at the Pittsburgh Children's Museum, this exhibit includes a video piece about Jerry Pinckney, 40 original illustrations created in pencil, watercolor, colored pencil, and crepaz from 16 books, including the award-winning book Mirandi and Brother Wind by Patricia C. McKissick, John Henry by Julius Lester, I Want to Be by Phileas Moss, and The Patchwork Quilt by Valerie Flournoy. At the Public Library met with Mr. Pinckney in the Jewett Gallery to discuss this exhibition and his work in general. It's interesting. I haven't seen this work and, and I've really taken the kind of time I have this morning in looking at it. And I think if there's a favorite piece it may be that piece I did for the um, poster with Dr. Martin Luther King, because in some sense it really speaks about building bridges. Well, it's very interesting because what it, building bridges is such a symbolic from getting one place to another. And I, to me, it means actually not only getting there, but understanding uh, um, uh, new places, new people, uh, new cultures. Um, it's really, in a sense, what I've tried to do with my work from the very beginning. And uh, also that um, one of the things I thought about, again, revisiting this work like I'm doing today is how every child or any child can come and find themselves reflected uh, on the walls here. And that piece, uh, I think, speaks to it more than, than uh, some of the others, of course, because of the nature of the fact that there are portraits of children. Uh, surrounding Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his message. About how long does it take for you to complete a piece? Um, you know, it, that, depending on how complicated, I'd like to answer that question. And, and like, for instance, there's a book here in the show called Turtle in July, where there's a creature almost on each page. Um, that process certainly, um, and the time would be less than, even though some of the drawings that appear simple take, took a long time to develop the, the, the movement and whatnot. Uh, but that would be a simpler process, again, in terms of time than, say, Black Cowboy or Minty, which is um, the amount of research that went into Minty, knowing and understanding about plantation life and wanting it to be um, accurate to the time and place is demanding. So that the research, which is a tremendous amount of amount of research is done the way it always been done by flipping through pages and reading and looking at pictures. I, I use the library all the time. I think one of the, there for two reasons. I mean certainly the main reason is, is I need research but the other part of it is I love the idea of, of libraries. I mean things happen to me in a library through the process of being there that, uh, that supports my creative process. So I if I'm dry for an idea, uh, then I, if I can get to the library and be around creativity and the idea and, and the physical, physical book itself, it really helps me very much. You know, the first 
I guess, primary thing that I want everyone, especially children, to leave the exhibition with is that, first of all, that they've been satisfied, that they've had a good time and a very enjoyable experience. And then I want it to be also layered, that after that happens, then they begin to think about, hey, uh, I know something about someone different than myself. Um, and that in that way, they begin to uh, start thinking about just people in the world differently, and, and hopefully fuller. You can experience the art of Jerry Pinckney more fully by visiting the Building Bridges Duet Gallery Exhibition, the display outside the Main Library's Children's Center, or any of the great Building Bridges children's events coming soon to a branch library near you. Here are just a few of the Building Bridges program highlights during March. On Wednesday, March 3rd, Awele Makeba brings In the Tradition to the Merced branch at 1.30 p.m. and to the North Beach branch at 3.45 p.m. On Thursday, March 11th, Zun Zun presents Musica de las Americas at the Excelsior branch at 11 a.m. On Thursday, March 18th, the Chinatown branch welcomes storyteller James T. Wallace at 4 p.m. The Western Edition branch presents Multicultural Storytelling with Clara Yen on March 23rd at 11 a.m. And Bonnie Lockhart brings music from around the world to the Sunset Branch on Tuesday, March 30th at 10.30 a.m. For more information on the Building Bridges exhibition and events, call the Public Affairs Office at 557-4277 or call your branch library. Or find out more online at the San Francisco Public Library website at www.sfpl dot lib dot ca dot us and click on kids in celebration of saint patrick's day the library will present dramatic readings of irish stories at four branch libraries the readings performed by al ghetto will include stories from james joyce and frank o'connor the first reading will be held at the Anza Branch Library on Saturday, March 6th at 1.30 p.m. Other branches presenting Al Ghetto reading Irish stories include the Presidio Branch on Wednesday, March 10th at 7 p.m., the Glen Park Branch on Saturday, March 13th at 2 p.m., and the Sunset Branch on Monday, March 15th at 7 p.m. All four programs are being sponsored by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library. For a complete listing of all the events and programs taking place at the San Francisco Public Library this month, check out the printed version of At the Public Library, published monthly by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library and available at all San Francisco neighborhood branch libraries. The library continues with its three great new literary series this month. Open Books, Writers at the Library, co-sponsored by Stacy's Bookstores and moderated by radio personality Naomi Ethel, kicked off with a bang in February with award-winning author T.C. Boyle. But he tugs at her hand and then they're fighting their way through the gauntlet of concerned parents at the door and out into the night. Dad, she cries, tugging back at him. And only then does he realize he's hurting her, clutching her hand like a lifeline in a swirl of darkening waters. I mean, have a cow, why don't you, she says. <laughs> and he drops her hand. Sorry, I, I wasn't thinking. The flag is motionless, hanging limp now against the pole. He gazes up at the stars fixed in their tracks, cold and distant. And then the gravel crunches underfoot, and they're in the parking lot. I just wanted a piece of cake, his daughter says. In the car. On the way home to her mother's house, she stares moodily out the window to let him feel the weight of her disappointment. But she can't sustain it. Before long, she's chattering away about Officer Rudman and Officer Torres, who sometimes helps with the program, telling him how nice they are and how corrupt the world is. We have gangs here, she says. Did you know that? Right here in our neighborhood. He gazes out on half-million-dollar homes, 
stone and stucco, mailboxes out front, basketball hoops over garage doors. The streets are deserted. He sees no gangs. Here? Uh-huh. Chrissy Mueller saw two guys in Raiders hats at the 7-Eleven the other day. <laughs> Maybe they were buying ho-hos. Maybe they just wanted a piece of cake. Come on, Dad, she says, but her tone tells him all is forgiven. Her mother's house is lighted like an arena, porch lights, security lights, even the windows poking bright, gleaming holes in the fabric of the night. He leans over to kiss his daughter goodnight, the car vibrating beneath him. Dad? Yeah? I just wanted to, to, you know, ask you, did you ever use drugs or mom? The question catches him by surprise. He looks beyond her, looks at that glowing bright house a moment, curtains open wide, the wash of light on the lawn. Abstertion, epop, Eleusinian, the shortest distance between two lights is a straight line. No, he says finally. No. Thanks. This hot new series continues with Oakland resident, author, and poet Guy Johnson on March 11th. Johnson, the son of Maya Angelou, will read from his sweeping new novel, Standing at the Scratch Line, a journey through 30 years of the African-American experience in America, at 6 p.m. on March 11th in the Main Library's Corette Auditorium. On Wednesday, March 10th, Open Books features Randall Keenan with his profoundly moving new book, Walking on Water, Black American Lives at the Turn of the 21st Century, a collection of more than 200 vivid and varied interviews examining the wide range of experiences in African American life as the century draws to a close. The fourth Tuesday of each month, Open Books will focus on new and alternative voices. In celebration of Women's History Month on March 23rd, the program will feature Brenda Webster, author of Paradise Farm, an intriguing portrait of a woman artist at the end of the 1920s. The Open Books programs include a reading from 6 to 7.15 p.m. with a book signing until 7.45 p.m. On the Page, Off the Page features monthly poetry readings by well-known Bay Area poets as well as an open mic segment. Moderated by the animated and energetic Diamond Dave Whitaker, March's guest poets are QR Hand and Whirlwind on Wednesday, March 17th. Next month, the series celebrates National Poetry Month with readings by Piri Thomas and prison poet Johnny Spain on Wednesday, April 14th. On the Page, Off the Page takes place at 5.30 p.m. in the Corette Auditorium. Ziziva, a West Coast literary magazine, continues its ongoing collaborations with the San Francisco Public Library in this newest series, Ziziva at the New Main, the Forgotten Central Valley. Produced by Ziziva editor Howard Junker and directed by well-known local actress Lori Holt, this Thursday evening series presents actors reading the works of authors from the Central Valley. Join us at 6.30 p.m on March 25th for writings by Leonard Gardner, on April 22nd for writings by Carrie McWilliams, and on May 27th for writings by Gerald Haslam, all in the Main Library's Corette Auditorium. So check out these outstanding literary events at the library this spring. Shades of San Francisco. A community photo album of the Western Edition is now on display in the sixth floor skylight gallery of the main library. This delightful photo exhibition features family, community, and neighborhood photographs that were shared with the library from private scrapbooks and collections at the Shades of San Francisco Western Edition Photo Day last year. The Western Edition Photo Day was the first of what will hopefully be an ongoing project that will expand the library's photograph collection to include personal family photos that tell the story of the city's neighborhoods. The exhibition reflects the library's goal to preserve the rich history of the various ethnic communities that have overlapped and coexisted 
throughout the history of the Western Edition and to document the changes in the physical landscape over the years. The Shades of San Francisco Photo Project is based on a successful project conducted by the Los Angeles Public Library, and similar photo projects are being replicated in communities throughout California. Library staff and volunteers selected over 400 photographs out of the 52 family collections that were brought in for the Shades of San Francisco Western Edition project. Details of the selected photos were recorded and then the photos were copied by two photographers using large format cameras. For many donors, the experience of sharing their family photographs and being interviewed about their family histories was particularly rewarding. The Shades Project attracted generous people who were willing to contribute their time, their personal family photos, and their life stories. The library is grateful for the efforts of these donors. Because of their generosity, the library is better able to preserve the history of the neighborhood and make it available for future generations. The Shades of San Francisco Western Edition project was funded by a grant from the Durfee Foundation through the Library Foundation of Los Angeles. Administrative support was provided by the Library Foundation of San Francisco. Susan Goldstein, the city archivist, and Pat Ockray, San Francisco Public Library photo curator, curated the exhibition, which was assembled through the library's Office of Exhibitions and Programs. The Shades of San Francisco, a community photo album of the Western Edition, will be on display in the Sixth Floor Skylight Gallery through March 25th. This month, the Main Library will present a Bay Area Nature Film Festival in collaboration with the independent documentary group and co-sponsored by the Wallace Stegner Environmental Center. The first of two programs will take place on Saturday, March 20th at 2 p.m. in the Main Library's Corette Auditorium. Films about the Bay and Delta will be presented. The award-winning documentary, Secrets of the Bay, a celebration of San Francisco Bay's hidden wildlife highlights a program that also includes an appearance by special guest Nancy De Stefanis, the Bay Area's stand-up nature comic from the San Francisco Bay Bird Observatory. The films San Pablo Baylands and Partners on the Land will also be screened. The Environmental Film Festival continues on Saturday, March 27th with three films exploring the topics of the Green Belt and Restoration. Treasures of the Green Belt, a half-hour documentary about Bay Area open space, farms, and parks, will be presented along with Kids by the Bay, a film about children participating in shoreline restoration, and a comedy nature film, Heron Island, about the hilarious antics of four blue heron chicks in Golden Gate Park. The Consumer Environmentalism Workshops, presented by Mothers and Others for a Livable Planet, continues at the Public Library this month with the programs Your Home, Clean and Green, Wednesday, March 17th at 6 p.m. in the Main Library's Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room, and a workshop on healthy, environmental-friendly cooking at the Ingleside Branch Library on Saturday, March 27th at 3 p.m. Mothers and Others for a Livable Planet is a national nonprofit consumer organization seeking to affect long term protection of public health and the environment. The Your Home Clean and Green workshop demonstrates how to reduce your family's exposure to environmental toxin and make your household less wasteful by changing the way you shop, clean, and get rid of junk. An accompanying exhibition presented by the Mothers and Others for a Livable Planet is currently on display in the Wallace Stegner Environmental Center through the end of March. The Consumer Environmentalism Workshops will continue in April with the workshop Baby's Natural Nursery, an interactive presentation and discussion for expectant parents and parents of young children about the ways to make their homes and children's lives safer and healthier while reducing environmental impact. 
The workshop takes place Wednesday, April 21st at 6 p.m. in the Main Library's Latino Hispanic Community Meeting Room. The Wallace Stegner Environmental Center of the San Francisco Public Library at the Main Library is a resource for literature and information about the natural world and the global environment. The center, located on the fifth floor of the main library, is named for noted environmentalist and Bay Area author Wallace Stegner, whose writings contain illuminating perceptions of nature and convey a deep commitment to the task of bringing human activities into harmony with the natural environment. The mission of the Stegner Environmental Center is to inspire understanding and appreciation of the interconnectedness and mutual dependence of life on Earth through an outstanding collection of environmental literature and innovative public programs. The Stegner Environmental Center collection contains fiction, poetry, and nonfiction books and materials, as well as audio and video tapes. Online resources are also available for use, including the Internet and World Wide Web. The Stegner Center Environmental Homepage, located on the San Francisco Public Library website, provides links to many other online resources. Funding for the Environmental Center has come from many community members and organizations under the leadership of the Friends of the Wallace Stegner Environmental Center. Recycling is using stuff over and over again to help save the earth. Recycling is to use something over and over and never waste it. Every scientist and every expert says the simplest and most important thing each of us can do for the environment is to recycle. Keep cans, bottles, and papers out of our landfill so they can get recycled. Take it back. Take it back. Buy stuff that's recycled. Recycle the stuff you buy. Take it back. For your information, the San Francisco Public Library Full Commission meets the first Tuesday and the third Thursday of every month at 5.30 p.m. in the Corette Auditorium on the lower level of the main library. In addition, during the months of April and May, the Commission will be holding special hearings at the branch libraries as set forth in the Proposition E Charter Amendment, which was passed by the voters in 1994. The provisions of Proposition E require that the library hold these hearings to elicit public input in regards to library hours. The library also hopes to use this process to ask the community about how the library can best serve them as part of a larger strategic long-range planning process. Please join us at one or more of these hearings at these dates and locations. All hearings will begin at 7 p.m. and conclude by 9 p.m. Volunteers are needed immediately to serve as greeters in the James C. Hormel Gay and Lesbian Center at the main library. Shifts are generally two to three hours per week for a minimum of six months. If you're excited about this opportunity and you're a friendly and articulate person, call Paul Signorelli, the library's director of volunteer services at 557-4280 for more information about becoming a volunteer. The San Francisco Public Library provides tax forms for photocopying only. We do not carry tax forms to give away. Here's where you can get tax forms. For all California state tax forms, go to the Franchise Tax Board, Taxpayer Service Center at 455 Golden Gate Avenue, Suite 7400, Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. And for all federal tax forms, go to the Federal Office Building, 450 Golden Gate Avenue. Enter on Turk Street during the construction. Go to room 5403 on the first floor, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And don't forget, the tax deadline is Thursday, April 15th. 
The San Francisco Public Library offers three great online training classes to help you learn how to navigate the library's online catalog and the internet. The series of classes conducted by librarians are given once a month on three consecutive evenings in the main library's Latino-Hispanic community meeting room. The series begins with a lecture and demonstration on how to use the library's online catalog to find the books and materials you want. The second class, Internet Basics, is a beginning level introduction to the Internet and the World Wide Web. And the third class explores the variety of online database resources available at the San Francisco Public Library. In March, the How to Use the Library's Online Catalog demonstration will be given on Tuesday, March 23rd at 5.30 p.m. Internet Basics, How to Use the Internet, will be given on Wednesday, March 24th at 5.30, and the Online Database class will be held on Tuesday, March 25th, also beginning at 5.30 p.m. This month, the Main Library International Center will present hands-on online catalog and internet training sessions in both Mandarin Chinese and Spanish. The Mandarin class will be held on Friday, March 26th at 2 p.m. in the Main Library's sixth floor training room. The Spanish class, also in the sixth floor training room, will be given on Saturday, March 27th at 1 p.m. Class size for both classes will be limited to 20 people. Free tickets for the classes will be available at the International Center Reference Desk located on the main library's third floor two weeks before each class. Thanks for watching at the Public Library here on CityWatch, cable channel 54. You can catch at the Public Library Mondays from 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning and from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Fridays from 8 to 9 in the evening and on Saturdays at 12 noon. See you next time.